Hello, everyone. So uh, I'm from Yokohama City. You know Yokohama? <laughs> okay. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, sort of a Mendelian diseases. So using a uh, pack bio systems. I don't have to s explain this. Skip. So uh, here is the sort of a you know. Um, uh, comp oh, oh, sorry. So advantage on this one, advantage of uh, long read sequencing. And uh, oh, oh. so um, basically the advantage of long read is uh, more than 10 kb read, no amplification, no template biases. So we can read high GC region and random errors, especially in smart sequencing technologies. Uh, also, but the uh, uh, disadvantage there, actually, that the high error rate in one read, actually 85% accuracy, uh, and also that the, especially the nanopore sequences and the strand biases are famous issues. And uh, also that the expensive, that's very important. So, uh, but then uh, it getting better, especially after the, you know, that the SQL2 system appears. So, but then uh, I would say that the long read sequencing can be used for CNB detection versus short read sequencing for SNB detection. This is simple comparison. So here is a, you know that the uh, comparison of a uh, uh, long read and a short read uh, analytic uh, uh, analytic way differences, like. Uh, especially, that I'm going to explain that the long read stuff and uh, uh, pack bio sequence system and then um, BAM file, and then using a smart analysis system, and uh, we are usually using a PBSB and um, a PBSB call in a VCF file, and then that the annotation things, that's really important, but still uh, developing. And then it is really difficult stuff here, comparing to uh, short read sequences. Um, they are mostly established, but then especially in the long read sequencing systems, uh, annotation is very important, but still immature in this field. So how we use the sequence systems? So I'm going to explain one of the examples. So this is a family of a progressive myoclonic epilepsy. And then the, the two saves affected, and that but then we perform the whole exam sequencing, but totally negative. So and then especially that, that there is a, some sort of a candidate gene, but we still couldn't find any SNV, even CNV2. So we decided to introduce in a sequel system, and especially that we did uh, a six coverage of a sequencing for this one particular proban, 2-2. Two, two. And then this is uh, how to narrow down that uh, SNB, or uh, CNBs, especially that the uh, deletion and insertion nearly uh, several thousand there, but then using um, um, three controls, uh, we uh, exclude that overlapping uh, CNV uh, from this one uh, case result. And then narrowing down to uh, reference sequencing and then overlaps in exons and then protein coding sequences like that. And then finally, we could narrow down a few candidate genes like CLN6 here. So especially we, we are focusing on the deletion because then it's easy to explain that. <laughs> So we carefully take a look at the, this result, and then um, here is um, 20 kilobase uh, deletion, uh, 12 kilobase deletion, and this is a result of exome data, and then only a bit of a sequence piled up here, especially in the, uh, control, but nothing here in the cases. So. And then this is actually the very first exon of uh, 
CLN6. And then especially we realize that this region is Haijishi rich region. So this is like uh, truly uh, involving a disease gene. And then we also carefully look at this gene and the region that the so surprisingly that the parent has a heterozygous deletion and then patient sieves has a homozygous deletion. This is unrelated families, but this is this is a true that the heterozygous deletion marriage and then cause a homozygous deletion in patients, in sieve patients. So and then we check the uh, CLN6 uh, expression in a patient lymphoblastoid cell, and then it turned out nothing can be seen in the patient LCL. So this is true that this patient SIPS truly lost the CLN6 expression, which caused this disease in these families. So then I'm going to switch to a repeat. So this is a constitution of a human genome, especially that the, when we uh, do a exome sequencing, we only focused in the gene area, only a 2%. But you know that the, it's famous that the human genome is notorious, especially for repetitive sequencing area, especially half of the genome constituted, uh, uh, half of the genome are indeed repetitive sequence area. So, but then usually we ignore this region, especially in uh, short read sequencing, but then uh, using long read sequencers, we can focus on this area. Why? Because long read can span the repeat region as well as a unique region too. That's why that the uh, accurate mapping is possible, like here. So, and also here is a list of uh, 30 disease, diseases in humans are caused by a tandem repeat changes. So, you can realize that most of the disease are neurological disorders. And uh, here is a range of a repeat expanded repeat in each disease, each disease. And then you can clearly see that the PAC bios average read length can cover most of the expanded repeat, repeated regions. So this means that the, if we use a long lead sequencing, uh, we can almost uh, find the abnormal expanded uh, gene. So it's now time to use the long lead sequencing for this kind of a disease. And then that day, so uh, my colleague um, Mitsuhashi and Fris uh, developed that the, especially the important uh, informatic method last tandem genotypes. This is truly useful for picking up uh, expanded uh, simple repeat changes. So like here, this is a dot plot, and then right graph shows that um, uh, four and uh, five times repetitive regions comparing to a uh, one-time control. So this is a workflow of uh, a tandem genotype. So basically, um, last alignment to reference genome, and the tandem genotype here, and so using the control data, we can narrow down uh -oh, uh, lipid copy number changes with prioritization. And then tandem genotype plot can make uh, some sort of a histogram to uh, clearly show that uh, which one is likely to be expanded. So, and also um, tandem genotype can pick up 
uh, the most of our repetitive uh, expanded regions, even if uh, relatively uh, shallow coverage sequencing, especially that and, uh, this um, green blot in a 40, G, 40 gig coverage, and uh, red one is a 185 gig uh, coverage. I mean that the, regardless of uh, you know data amount, we can mostly pick up the repetitive expanded uh, regions using this method. So I would re highly recommend you to use that. So this is one of the example how tandem genotype can pick up the expanded repeat. Uh, we use uh, the already detected family, uh, detect, um, uh, I already, um, and in this family, we already detected the cause of uh, repeat expansion that the, uh, and then, but then uh, we had a data, pack biosequence sequencing, actually that the 44 gigabyte data, and then we applied tandem genotype to this family, and then you can clearly see that the second uh, ranked prioritization actually showing that the repeat expansion in some D12 intern area. This is causative expansion. Uh, expansion. So we confirm that the um, tandem genotype can be used for this kind of uh, analysis. So then we apply tandem genotype to our unsolved family, especially we focused on that uh, uh, neuronal intranuclear inclusion diseases. So in collaboration with uh, Dr. Sone and the Subway in Nagoya University, uh, they, uh, they collectively um, gather that the uh, nine families with these diseases. So um, Mitsuhashi and Fujita uh, up applied this technology, especially to this family one. And then using a whole exome sequencing and a whole genome sequencing data, we first did a linkage analysis, and then we did find a maximum load score is 4.2, and likely to be a true locus in this family. But whole exome sequencing and a whole genome sequencing by short read was totally negative. So we applied that now, PAC bio RS2, it's an old data, because in a, uh, my, my former, uh, actually that the Dr. Sonia's group did already an, uh, uh, analyze an, uh, these families that using a, uh, the very first PAC bio sequencing systems. Actually, that the, they obtained that 74 gigabytes, and the average lead length is 8.3 kb. And then we applied the, the tandem genotype to this family, and then surprisingly, not surprisingly, but then, uh, actually that then one of the gene actually shows that the GGC repeat expansion ranked as number one. So we are so happy about this. And then um, we designed uh, repeat primed PCR to detect this repeat expansion. And then uh, our repeat primed PCR can detect this kind of uh, sortis patterns in that family young, as well as the other eight families and 40 sporadic cases. We also developed that the um, amplicon length uh, repeat expansion detection systems. So actually that uh, just a, just an uh, uh, fluorescent level forward and the reverse uh, sequencing to span that uh, repeat expansion, and then you can clearly see that the expanded region can be 
clearly seen in the right uh, image of this slide. So, and then using this, we actually that the check all the repeat expansion in the family and the sporadic cases. And then we did find that the patient group showed uh, 71 to 183 repeat expansion, but normal control is mostly uh, less than 61 repeat gain. So, and that the, if um, this 61 repeat in control uh, would be a, a, um, an asymptomatic carrier of this disease, uh, but we don't really know because you know, we cannot reach this uh, control uh, information. So, but you know, if it, we exclude the 61 repeat gain, uh, most of the normal repeat is less than 30. And that, that the sequence sequel system are now provide um, no amp smart bell library construction system using a uh, CRISPR Cas9 because uh, we really want to check the repeat contents in this disease. But unfortunately, about a year ago, this kind of a technology was um, available to us. So, but uh, fortunately that you know, we could use a similar technology using uh, nanopore technologies, and then that the uh, guide RNA uh, spans uh, expanded the repeat region and gathers and the sequencing by long lead sequencer. And this is a result of a uh, um, Cas9 enrichment system. Unfortunately, not a PAC bio system, but now it's available. So then, um, so such an enrichment system allows us to accurately map these expanded uh, regions. Actually, the top one is a normal allele, and the second one is only a GGC repeat expansion, and the third one is combinatory GGC repeat and GGA repeat expansion. It's interesting that the GGC only repeat expansion showing the main dementia dominant type in NIID. However, combinatory expansion type only found in dementia plus muscle weakness type. So this tells us that the repeat content is very important to explain the phenotype of even in a repeat expansion disease. So this is why that then we have to use a long read sequencer to detect the contents of a repeat. So this is a summary. So long read sequencing is ready for disease analysis. So now reasonable cost. And the West negative cases would be a good target, but informatics tools are still limited, and but updating. So, for example, the smart link, last tandem genotype, or so on. And especially this kind of analysis, control data are essential to exclude the polymorphic uh, changes, and also that the targeting a copy number variation, especially with a. Uh, 20 base pair or more is a good target rather than SNV. And uh, repeat disease are good target for this type of analysis. And then you can go to um, poster uh, by uh, my colleague Anna Satomi. Uh, she will explain the technological as aspect <coughs> In this, disease, in this disease or in the techno and, and the nanopore or, or other technologies. And then this is our acknowledgement and I would like to thank all the collaborators. And this is my laboratories. P 
people. And uh, I would like to introduce a uh, uh, journal of human genetics. Uh, I've been uh, editor-in-chief for nearly uh, six years, and now impact factor is 3.545. And I am happy to tell that uh, uh, 2020 January special issues and uh, long read of sequencing in human genetics appeared so in a few months so probably you will enjoy this uh, special issue so thank you very much for your kind attention